Hey everyone, it's Litton, and welcome to Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone Read Aloud. We're going to begin Chapter 6 in a second, because apparently I didn't finish Chapter 5. I, I meant for it to go longer than it should have, but it's been a, it, it was like 50 minutes or something. But we need to get started now. I accidentally pressed stop and stuff on the last video, so we're going to finish Chapter 5 and read the like 25 pages of Chapter 6. Let's get and move on. Okay. Harry took the wand and, feeling foolish, waved it around a bit, but Mr. Ollivander snatched it out of his hand almost at once. Maybe. Maple and Phoenix feather. Seven inches. Quite whippy. Try Harry tried, but he had hardly raised the wand when it, too, was snatched by Mr. Ollivander. No, no. Here, e ebony and unicorn hair. Eight and a half inches. Springy. Go on, go on. Try it out. Harry tried and tried. He had no idea what Mr. Ollivander was waiting for. The pile of tried uh, wands was mounting higher and higher on the spindly chair. But the more wands Mr. Ollivander pulled out from his str from from the shelves, the happier he seemed to become. Tricky customer, eh? Not to worry. We'll find the perfect match here. Somewhere, I wonder. Now. Yes. Why not? Unusual combination. Holly and Phoenix feather. Eleven inches. Nice and subtle. Harry took the wand. He felt a sudden warmth in his fingers. He raised the wand above his head, brought it swishing down through the dusty air in a stream of red and gold sparks, shot from the end like a firework, throwing dancing spots of light on the walls. Hagrid whooped and clapped in. Mr. Ollivander cried, Oh, bravo! Yes, indeed. Oh, very good. Well, well, well. How curious. How very curious. Curious indeed. He put Harry's wand into back into the uh, back into its box and wrapped it in its brown paper, still muttering, Curious. Curious. Sorry, said Harry, but what's curious? Mr. Ollivander fixed Harry with his pale stare. I remember every wand I've ever sold, Mr. Potter. Every single wand. It so happens that the phoenix whose tail feather is in your wand gave another feather. Just one other. It is very curious indeed that you should be destined for this wand and when its brother, why, its brother gave you that, star that scar. Harry swallowed. Yes, thirteen and a half inches. You, curious indeed how these things happen. The wand chooses the wizard. Remember, I think we must expect great things from you, Mr. Potter. After all, Hugh must not be named, did great things. Terrible, yes, but great. Harry shivered. He wasn't sure he liked Mr. Ollivander too much. He paid seven gold gallons for his wand. And Mr. Ollivander bowed them, bowed them from his shop. The late afternoon sun hung low in the sky as Harry and Hagrid made their way back down Diagon Alley, back through the wall, back through the leaky cauldron, now empty. Harry didn't speak at all as they walked down the road. He didn't even notice how much people were gawking at them on the underground, laden as they were all with with all their funny-shaped packages, with the snowy owl asleep in its cage on Harry's lap, up another escalator, out in into Paddington st Station. Harry only realized there where they were there... Sorry. <laughs> Harry only realized where they were when Hagrid tapped him, tapped him on the shoulder. Got time for a bite to eat before your train leaves? He said, he bought Harry a hamburger and, and they sat down on plastic seats to eat them. Harry kept looking around. Everything looked so strange somehow. Y'all all, all alright, Harry? You're very quiet, said Hagrid. Harry wasn't sure he could explain. He just had the best birthday of his, lo of his life. And yet, he chews his hamburger, trying to think the words. Everyone thinks I'm special, he said at last. 
all those people in the Leaky Cauldron, Professor Quarrel, Mr. Ollivander. But I don't know anything about magic at all. How can they expect great things? I'm famous and I can't remember what I'm famous for. I don't know what happened when, well, sorry. I mean, but not, my parents died. Haggard leaned across the table. Behind the wild beard and eyebrows, he wore a very kind smile. Don't you worry, Harry. You'll learn fast enough. Everyone starts at the beginning of at Hogwarts. You'll be just fine. Be Just be yourself. I know it's hard. You've been singled out. And I know that's always hard. And y'all have a great time at Hogwarts. I did. Still do. Smatter of fact. Hagrid helped Harry on Hagrid helped Harry on the train that would take him back to the Dursleys. Then handed him an envelope. Your ticket for Hogwarts, he said. First of September, King's Cross. It's all on your ticket. Any problems with the Dursleys? Send me a letter with your owl. She'll know where to find me. See ya soon, Harry. The train pulled out of the station. Harry wanted to watch Hagrid until he was out of sight. He rose in his seat, pressed his nose against the window, but he blinked and Hagrid had gone. Okay, okay. Chapter 6. A journey from platform 9 and 3 quarters. Harry's last month with the Dursley wasn't fun. Really? Here, just a, just a second. Okay. Sorry about that. I just wanted to skip all the ads. They take forever. Okay, let's start again. Harry's last month with the Dursleys wasn't fun. True, Dudley was now now so scared of Harry, he wouldn't stay in the same room. While Aunt Petunia and Uncle Vermont didn't shut Harry in his cupboard, force him to do anything, or shout at him. In fact, they didn't speak to him at all. Half terrified, half furious, they acted as though any chair with Harry in it were empty. Although, there was an improvement in many ways, it did become a bit depressing after a while. Harry kept to his room, with his new owl for company. He had decided to call her Hedwig, a name he had found in A History of Magic. His school books were, were very interesting. He lay on his bed reading late into the night, Hedwig swooping in and out of the open window as she, as she pleased. It was lucky that Aunt Petunia didn't come in to vacuum anymore. Because Hedwig kept bringing back dead mice, every night before he went to sleep, Harry ticked off another day on the piece of paper he had pinned to his to the wall, counting down to September the 1st. On the last day of August, he thought he'd better speak to his aunt and uncle about getting to King's Cross Station the next day. As he went down to the living room, where they were watching a quiz show on television, he cleared his throat and let them know he was there, and Dudley screamed and ran from the other, from the room. Er, uh, Uncle Vermont? Uncle Vermont grunted to show he was listening. Er, uh, I need to be at King's Cross tomorrow. To, to go to Hogwarts. Uncle Vermont grunted again. Would it be, would it be alright? Would, would it be alright if you gave me a lift? Grunt. Harry supposed to that meant yes. Thank you. He was about to go back upstairs when Uncle Vermont actually spoke. Funny ways, funny way to get to our wizard school, the train. Magic carpets all got punctures, have they? Harry didn't say anything. Where's the school anyways? I don't know, said Harry, realizing this for the first time. He pulled a ticket. Hagrid had given him out of his pocket. I just t take the train from platform 9 and 3 quarters at 11 o'clock, he read. His aunt and uncle stared. Platform what? 9 and 3 quarters. Don't talk rubbish, said Uncle Vermont. There is no platform 9 and 3 quarters. It's on my ticket. Yeah, I can turn it up, the music. It's on my ticket. Barking, said Uncle Vermont, howling mad for a lot of him. You'll see, you just wait. All right, we'll take you to King's Cross. We're going up to London tomorrow anyway. Or I wouldn't bother. Why are you going to London? Harry asked, trying to keep things friendly. Taking Dudley to the hospital, growled Uncle Vermont. 
got to have that rody tail removed before he goes to smeltings. Harry woke at 5 o'clock the next morning and he was just, he was too excited and nervous to go back to sleep. He got up and pulled on his jeans because he didn't want to walk into the station in his wizard's robe. He changed on, he changed on the train. He checked his Hogwarts list yet again to make sure he had everything he needed, saw that Hagrid was, Hedwig was shut safely in her, in her cage, and then paced the room, waiting for the Dursleys to get up. Two, hour two hours later, Harry's huge, heavy trunk had been loaded into the Dursleys' car. Aunt Petunia had talked Dudley into sitting next to Harry, and they had set off. This is a good song. They reached King's Cross at half past ten. Uncle Vermont dumped Harry's trunk onto a cart and wheeled it into the station for him. Harry thought this was strangely kind until Uncle Vermont stopped dead, facing the platforms, with a nasty grin on his face. Well, there you are, boy. Platform 9, 9, platform 10. Your platform should be somewhere in the middle. But they don't seem to have it built yet, do they? He was quite right, of course. There, there was a big plastic number 9 over the one platform and a big plastic 10 over the one next to it. And in the middle, nothing. Nothing at all. Have a good term, said Uncle Vermont with an even nastier smile. He left without another word. Harry turned and saw the Dursleys drive away. All three of them were laughing. Harry's mouth went rather dry. What on earth was he going to do? He was starting to attract a lot of funny looks because of Hedwig. He'd have to ask someone. He stopped to he stopped a passing guard, but didn't dare ma mention nine and three quarters. The guard had never heard of Hogwarts, and when Har Harry couldn't even tell him what part of the country it was in, he started getting started to get annoyed, as though Harry was being stupid on purpose. Getting desperate, Harry asked for the train that left at eleven o'clock, but the guard said there wasn't one. In the end. The guard strode away, muttering about time wasters. Harry was now trying hard not to panic. According to the large clock over the arrivals board, he had ten minutes left to get on the train on two Hogwarts, and he had no idea how to do it. He was str he was stranded in the middle of a station with a trunk he could he could hardly l lift. A pocket full of wizard monkey. M money <laughs> and a large owl. Hopper must have forgotten to tell him some something you had to do, like tapping the third brick on the left to get into Diagon Alley. He wondered if he could get get out his wand and start tapping the tickets inspectors stand be between platforms nine and ten. At the moment, a group of people passed just behind, and he caught a few words of what they were saying. Packed with muggles, of course. Harry swung around, sw swung around. The speaker was a plump woman who was talking to four boys, all with flaming red hair. Each of them was pushing a trunk like Harry's in front of him, and they had an owl. Heart hammering, Harry pushed his cart after them. They stopped, and so did he. Just near enough, he just near enough to hear what they were saying. No, no. I don't know how to do this voice. Now, what's the platform number? Oh, that's a boy. Never mind. Now, what's the now what's the platform number? Said the boy's mother. Nine and three quarters. Pipped it. Nine and three quarters. Pipped a small girl, also redheaded, who was holding her hand. Mom, I can't. Can't I go? You're not old enough, Jenny. Now be quiet. All right, Percy. You go first. When he looked like who what looked like the oldest boy marched toward platform 9 and 10. Harry watched careful, not to blink in case he missed it. But just as the boy reached the diving, dividing barrier between the two platforms, a large crowd of horse came squirming in front of them. And by the, by the time the next backpack had cleared away, the boy had vanished. Fred, Fred, you next! I'm not Fred, I'm George, said the boy. Honestly, woman, you call yourself your our mother? Can't you tell I'm George? Sorry, George, dear. 
Only joking, I am Fred, said the boy, and he went off. His twin called after him in called after him to hurry up, and he must have done so, because the second later he had gone, but how had he done it? Now the third brother was walking briskly toward the barrier, he was almost there, and then, quite suddenly, he wasn't anywhere. There was nothing else t for him for it. Excuse me, said Har Harry said to the plump woman. Hello, dear, she said. First time at Hogwarts? Ron's new, too. She pointed at the last, the last and youngest of her sons. He was tall, thin, and gangling with... I think that's how he pro got gangling, I don't know, with freckles, big hands, and feet, and a long nose. Yes, said Harry. The thing is, the, the thing is, I, I don't know how to... How to get onto the platform? She said kindly, <laughs> and Harry nodded. Not to worry, she said. All you have to do is walk straight at the barrier between platforms 9 and 10. Don't stop and... Don't stop and don't be scared. You'll crash into it. That's very important. Best do it at a bit of a run if you're nervous. Go on. Go now before I run. Er, uh, okay. Said Harry. So I, I'm bad at doing, um, Mrs. Weasley's voice. Who does a good song? He pushed his trolley around and st start stared at the border. It looked very solid. He started to walk toward it. People Joyce, jo Joyce le led him on the other way, on their way to platforms nine and ten. Harry walked more quickly. He was going to smash right into the barrier, and then he'd be in trouble. Leaning forward on his cart, he broke into a heavy run. The barrier was coming nearer and nearer. He wouldn't be able to stop. The cart was out of control. He was a foot away. He closed his eyes, ready for the crash. It didn't come. He kept running. He opened his eyes. A scarlet steam engine was waiting next to the platform packed with people. A sign overheard said, Hogwarts Express, 11 o'clock. Harry looked behind him and saw a wrought iron archway where the barrier had been, with the words Platform 9 and 3 quarters on it. He had done it. Smoke from the engine drifted over the heads of a chattering clap, clap, crowd, while cats of every color wound here, here and there, between their legs. Owls hooted to one another in a, di in a disgruntled sort of way, over the babble and the scraping of heavy trunks. The first few carriages were already packed with students, some hanging out of a window to talk with their families, some fighting over seats. Harry pushed his cart out off down the platform in search of an empty seat. He passed a round-faced boy who was saying, Gran, I've lost my toad again. Oh, Nivel! He heard the old woman sigh. A boy with dreadlocks was surrounded by a small cloud. Give us a look, Lee. Go on. The boy lifted the lid off a box in his arms, and the people around him shrieked and yelled at something inside, poked out a long, hairy leg. Harry pressed on through the crowd until he found an empty compartment near the end of the train. He put Hedwig inside first and then started to shove the and heave his trunk toward the train door. He tried to lift it up up the steps, but he could hardly raise one end and twice and twice he dropped it painfully on his foot. Want a hand? It was one of the red hand haired twins he'd follow. Followed through the barrier. Yes, please, Harry panted. Oi, Fred, come on here and help. With the twins' help, Harry's trunk was at last tucked away in the, in a corner of a compartment. Thanks, said Harry, pushing his sweaty hair out of his eyes. What's that? Said one of the tw twins, suddenly pointing at Harry's lightning scar. Blindly, said the other twin. Are you? He is, said the first twin. Aren't you? He added to Harry. What? Said Harry. Harry Potter! Course the twins. Oh, him, said Harry. I, I mean, yes, I am. Um, the, the two boys gawked at him, and Harry felt himself turning red. Then, to his relief, a voice came floating in through the train's open door. 
Fred? George? Are you are you there? Coming, Mom. With a last look at Harry, the twins popped off the train. Harry sat down next to the window where, half hidden, he could watch the red haired family on the platform and hear what they were saying. Their mother had just taken out her handkerchief. Ron, you got something on your nose! The youngest boy tried to jerk out out of the way, but she grabbed him and began rubbing the end of his nose. Mom, get off. He wriggled free. Ah! Ah! Has Ickle, Ickle Ronnie got something on his nose? Some of the twins? Shut up, said per Ron. Where's Percy? Where's Percy? said their mother. He's coming now. The oldest boy came striding into sight. He had already changed and she was bellowing black Hogwarts robes, and Harry noticed a shiny red and gold badge on his chest with the letter P on it. Can't stay long, mother, he said. I'm up front. The prefects have got two compartments to themselves. Oh, oh, are you a prefect, Percy? said one of the twins with an air of great surprise. You should have said something. We had no idea. Hang on, I think I remember him saying something about it to the other twin, once, or twice, a minute, all summer. Oh, shut up, said Percy, the prefix. How come Percy got new, gets new robes anyways, said one of the twins. Because he's a prefix, said their mother fondly. All right, dear, well, have a good turn. Send me an owl when you get there. She kissed Percy on the cheek and left. Then she turned to, hit, to the twins. You two, here, you behave yourself. If if I get one more owl telling me you've you've blown up a toilet or blown up a toilet, we've never blown up a toilet. Great idea, thanks, mom. It's not funny. And look after Ron. And look after Ron. Don't worry, Ickle Ronikins is safe with us. Shut up, said Ron, who's almost as tall as the twins already, and his nose was still pink where his mother had rubbed it. Hey mom, guess what? Guess who we just met on a train? Harry leaned back quickly as they couldn't see him looking. You know that black haired boy who was near us in the train in the station? Know who he is? Who? Oh, Harry Potter. Harry heard the little little girl's voice. <laughs> saw his his scar. It's really there, like lightning. Poor dear, no wonder he was alone. I wondered. He was, he was ever so polite when he asked how to get onto the platform. Never let... When I listen to Audible, I'm wow. just pushing my big just a minute. Long haul from... Um, yeah, just Thanks a minute. Okay, back... More ads had to skip it and stuff. Okay. Let's continue. We're, it's gonna be a long ride. <laughs> no, never mind that. Do you think he remembers what you know who looks like? Their mother suddenly became very stern. I forbid you to ask him, Fred. No, don't you dare. As though he needs reminding of us on his first day at school. All right. Keep your hair on. A whistle sounded. Hurry up! Their mother said, and the three boys clambered onto the train. They leaned out of the window for her to kiss them goodbye. And their younger younger sister began to cry. <laughs> Don't, Jenny. We'll send you loads of owls. We'll send you a Hogwarts toilet seat. George! Only joking, Mom. The train began to move. Harry saw the boy's mother waving and, and their sister half laughing, half crying, running to keep up with the train until it gathered too much speed. Then she fell back and waved. Harry watched the girl and her mother disappeared, disappear as the train rounded the corner. Houses flashed past the window. 
Harry felt a great leap of excitement. He didn't know what he was going to, but it had to be better than what what he was leaving behind. The door of a compartment slid open and the youngest red-headed boy came in. Anyone sitting here? He asked, pointing at the seat opposite opposite Harry. Everywhere else, everywhere else is full. Harry shook his head and the boy sat down. He glanced at Harry and then looked quickly out of a window, pretending he hadn't looked. Harry saw he still had a black mark on his nose. Hey, Ron. The twins were back. Listen, we're going to de we're going down the middle of the train. Lee Jordan's got a giant tarantula down there. Right, mumbled Harry. Harry, said the other twin. Did we introduce ourselves? Fred and George Weasley. And this is Ron, our brother. See you later, then. Bye, said Harry and Ron. The twins slid the compartment door shut behind them. Are you really Harry Potter? Ron blurted out. Harry nodded. Oh, well, I thought it might be one of Fred and George's jokes, said Ron. And have, have you really got, you know, he pointed at Harry's forehead. Harry Harry pulled up pull, pulled back his bangs to show the lightning scar. Ron stared. So that's where you know who? Yes, said Harry, but I can't remember it. Nothing? said Harry eagerly. I mean Ron eagerly. Well, I remember a lot of green light, but nothing else. Wow, said Ron. He sat and stared at Harry for a few moments. Then, as though he had suddenly realized that he was doing what he was doing, he looked quickly out of the window again. Are all of your family wizards? asked Harry, who found Ron as interesting as Ron found him. Er, yes, I think so, said Ron. I think Mum's got a second cousin who's an accountant, but we never talk about him. As you must know, as you must know, loads of magic already. The Weasleys were clearly one of the one of those old wizarding families the pale boy in Diagon Alley was talking about. I heard you went to live with the Muggles, said Ron. What are they like? Horrible. Well, not all of them. My aunt and uncle and cousin are. Though I wished I'd have had three wizard brothers. Five, said Ron. For some, Ron, for some, re for some reason, he was looking gloomily. I'm the sixth in our family to go to Hogwarts. You could say I've got a lot to live up to. Bill and Charlie had already left. Bill was head of... Was was head boy and Charlie was captain of Quidditch. Now Percy's a prefect. Fred and George mess around a lot, and they still get really good marks in everything. Everyone thinks they're really funny. Everyone ex expects me to do as well as the others, but if I do, it's no big deal because they did it first. You never get anything new either. With five brothers, I've got Bill's old robes. Charlie's old wand, and Percy's old rat. Ron reached inside his jacket and pulled out a, a fat gray rat, which was asleep. His name's Scabbers, and he's useless. He hardly ever wakes up. Percy got an owl from my dad for being made a prefix, but they couldn't... Uh, I mean, I got Scabbers instead. Ron's ears went, pin went pink. He seemed to think he'd said too much because he went back to staring out of the window. Harry didn't think there were any, was anything wrong with not being able to afford an owl. After all, he'd never had any money in his life until a month ago, and he told Ron so, all about having to wear Dudley's old clothes and never getting proper birthday presents. This seemed to cheer Ron up, and until Hawkward told me, I didn't know anything about anything a wizard or about my parents or Voldemort. Ron gasped. What? said Harry. You said you know whose name, said Ron, sounding both shocked and impressed. I'd have thought you, of all people, I'm not trying to be brave or anything, saying his name, said Harry. I'm not trying to be brave or anything, saying the name, said Harry. I, I just never knew you shouldn't. See what I mean? I've got loads to learn, I bet. He added, voicing for the first time something that had been worrying him a lot lately. I bet I'm the worst in the class. You won't be, 
There's loads of people who come from muggle families, and they learn quick enough. While they were talking, the train had carried them out, out of London. Now they were sp speeding past fields full of cows and sheep. They were quiet for quiet. They were quite for a time, watching, watching the fields and lanes flick past. Around a half past twelve, there was a great clattering outside in the corridor, and a smiling, dimp dimpled woman slid back, slid back their door, and said, "Anything on the car, dears?" Harry, who had hadn't had any breakfast, leapt to his feet. But Ron's ears went pink again, and he muttered that he'd brought sandwiches. Harry went out into the corridor. He had never had any money for candy with the Dursleys, and now that he had pockets rattling with gold and silver, he was ready to buy as many Mars bars as he could carry. But the woman didn't have Mars bars. What she did have were Bertie Bots, Every Flavor Beans, Drupal's Best glow Blowing Gum, Chocolate Frogs, Pumpkin pas Pasties, Cauldron Cakes, Licorice Wands, and a number of other strange things Harry had never seen in his life. Not wanting to miss anything, he got some of everything and paid the woman eleven sickles, eleven silver sickles, and seven bronze nuts. Ron stared as Harry bought, bought, brought it all back to the compartment and tipped it onto an empty seat. Hungry are you? Starving, said Harry, taking a large bite bite out of a pumpkin pasty. Ron had taken out a lump, lumpy package and unwrapped it. There were four sandwiches inside. He folded one of them apart and said, She always forgets I don't like corned beef. Swath you one with these, said Harry, holding up a pasty. Go on. She don't want this. It's all dry, said Ron. She hasn't got much time, he added quickly. You know, with the five of us. Go on, have a pasty, said Harry, who had never had anything to share before, or, indeed, anyone to share it with. It was a nice feeling, sitting there with Ron, eating their way through all Harry's pasties, pasties, cakes, and candies. The sandwich lay forgotten. What are these? Harry asked Ron, holding up a pack of chocolate frogs. They're not really frogs, are they? He was starting to feel that feel that nothing would surprise him. No, said Ron. But see what the card is. I'm su I'm missing a pre Agrippa. What? Of oh, of course you would know. Chocolate frogs have cars inside of them. You know to collect famous witches and wizard. I've got about five hundred, but I haven't got Agrippa, Agrippa, or Pitomoli. Pitom. Ptolemy. Harry unwrapped his chocolate frog and picked up the card. Showed a face. He wore half moon glasses, had a long crooked, n crooked nose, and a and flowing silver hair, beard, and a, a and mustache. Underneath the picture was the name Albus Dumbledore. Oh, so this is Dumbledore," said Harry. "Don't tell me you've never heard of Dumbledore," said Ron. "Can I have a frog?" I might get Ap Agrippa. Thanks. Harry turned over his card in red. Albus Dumbledore, currently headmaster, headmaster of Hogwarts. Considered by many of the greatest wizards from of modern times, Dumbledore is particularly famous for his defeat of the dark wizard Grindelwald in 1945 for the discovery of 12 uses of dragon's blood in his work on alchemy with his partner, Nicholas Flamel. Professor Dumbledore enjoys chamber music and ten-pin bullying. Harry turned the card back, in o back over and saw, to his astonishment, that Dumbledore's face had disappeared. He's gone! Well, you can't expect him to hang around all day, said Ron. He'll be back. No, I've got Morgana again, and I've got about six of her. Do you want her? You can start collecting. Ron's eyes strayed to the pile of chocolate frogs waiting to be unwrapped. Help yourself, said Harry. But in, you know, the muggle world, people just stay put in photos. Do they? What? what? They don't move at all? Ron sounded amazed. Weird.
<laughs> Harry stared at as Dumbledore settled back into the picture of his card and gave him a small smile. Ron was more interested in eating the, the frogs than looking at the famous witches and wizards wizard cards. But Harry couldn't help couldn't keep his eyes off them. Soon he would not only well, not only Dumbledore and Morgana, but the but Hengist of Woodcraft, Woodcroft, Alberic, Grunion, Circe, Paracelsus, and Merlin. Oh, Merlin's good. He finally tore his eyes away from the droodiness Cleodonia, who was scratching her nose to open a bag of Bertie's, Bertie Bot's every flavor of beans. You want to be careful with those, Ron warned Harry. When they when they say every flavor, they mean every flavor. You know, you get all the ordinary ones like chocolate and peppermint and marmalade. But then you could get spinach or liver and tripe. George reckons he had a book of flavored ones. Spinach, spinach flavor actually sounds kind of good. <laughs> Ron picked up a green bean, looked at it carefully, and bit into a corner. Bleh, see? Sprouts. They had a good time eating the every flavor beans. Here we got toast, coconut, baked beans, strawberry, curry, grass, coffee, sardine, and was even brave enough to nibble the end of a funny gray one Ron wouldn't touch, which turned out to be pepper. The countryside was now flying past a window was was becoming wilder. The neat fields had gone. Now there was woods, twisting rivers, and dark green hills. There was a knock on the door of their compartment, and the round-faced boy Harry had passed on platform nine and three quarters came in. He looked tearful. Tearful. Sorry, he said, but have have you seen a to toad anywhere at all? When they shook their heads, he wailed. I've lost him. He keeps getting away from me. He'll turn up, said Harry. Yes, said the boy miserably. Well, if you see him... He left. Don't know why he's so bothered, said Ron. If I brought back a toad, I'd lose it as quick as I could. Mind you, I brought scabbers, so I can't talk. The rabber, the, uh, <laughs> the rat was still sneezing on Ron's lap. He might have died, and you wouldn't know the difference, said Ron in disgust. I tried to turn him yellow yesterday to make him more interesting, but the spell didn't work. I'll show you. Look. He, rum he rummaged around in his trunk and pulled a very battered-looking wand. It was chipped in places, and some t something white was glinting, glinting at the end. Unicorn hairs nearly poking out. Anyway, he had just raised his wand when the compartment door slid open again. The toadless boy was back, but this time he had a girl with him. She already she was already wearing her Hogwarts robes. Has anyone seen a toad? Nibbles lost one. I'm trying to do her voice. <laughs> British voice. She had a bossy sort of voice. Oh, lots of bushy brown hair, and rather large front teeth. We've already told him. Told him we haven't seen him. Seen it. But Ron. But, but the girl wasn't listening. She was looking at the wand in his hand. Ooh, are you doing magic? Let's see it then. She sat down. Ron looked taken aback. Er, all right. He cleared his voice. Sunshine daisies, butter mellow. Turn, turn the stupid fat rat yellow. He waved his wand in, but, but nothing happened. Scabbers stayed gray and fast asleep. Are you sure that's a real spell? Said the girl. Well, it's not very good, is it? I've try, tried a few simple spells. Just for practice, and it's all worked for me. Nothing my family's magic at all. It was ever such a surprise when I got my letter. But I was ever so pleased. Of course, I mean, it's the very best school of witchcraft there is. I've, I've heard. I've learned all of our course books by heart, of course. I just hope it will be enough. I'm Hermione Granger. By the way, who are you? She said all of this very fast. Harry looked at Ron and was relieved by his stunned face that he hadn't learned all the course books by heart either. I'm Ron Weasley, Ron muttered. 
Harry Potter, said Ron, said Harry. Are you really? Said Hermione. I know all about you, of course. I got a few extra books for background reading. And you're, and you're in Modern Magical History. And Rise and Fall of the Dark Arts. And Great Wizarding Events in, of the 20th Century. Emma, said Harry, feeling dazed. Goodness, didn't you know? I've... I'd have found out everything I could if it was me. Do either of you know what house you'll be in? I've been asking around, and I hope I'm in Gryffindor. It sounds by far the best. I hear Dumbledore says he says him. I hear Dumbledore himself was in it, but I suppose Graven, Ravenclaw Ravenclaw would be wouldn't be too bad. Anyway, you'd better get go and look for Neville's Toad. You two better ha better change. You know, I expect we'll be there soon. She left, taking the Totus boy with her. Whatever house I am, I'm in. I hope she's not in it," said Ro said Harry. I mean, said Ron. I'm gonna take a break for a minute. I've been reading for a long time. Okay, sorry about that. Just needed to get something, something to drink. Okay, let's continue. Uh, let's see. Where was I? Whatever house I'm in, I hope she's not in it," said Ron. He threw his wand back into the trunk. Stupid spell! George gave it to me, but he knew it was a dud. What house is your brother's in? asked Harry. Gryffindor," said Ron. Gloom seemed to be settling on him again. Mum and Dad were in it too. I I I don't know why they'll be. What what? I don't know what they'll say if I'm not. I, I don't suppose Ravenclaw would be too bad, but, in, but imagine me. Imagine if you put me in Slytherin. Well, tell you what, he's he's got a really bad chance of being in Ravenclaw. That's the house. That's the house vault. I mean, you know who was in. Yeah, said Ron. He flopped back into his seat, looking depressed. You know, I think the ends of Scabbers' whiskers are a bit lighter, said Harry. Trying to make, trying to take Ron's mind off houses. So, what do your older oldest brothers do now that they've left anyway? Harry was wondering what uh, what a wizard did once he'd finished school. Charlie's in Romania studying dragons, and Bill Bill's in Africa doing something for Gringotts. Said Ron. Did you hear about Gringotts? It's been all over the Daily Prophet. But I don't suppose you get that with the muggles. Someone tried to rob a high security vault. Harry stared. Really? What happened to them? Nothing. That's why it's big news. It's such big news. They haven't been caught. My dad says it must have been a powerful dark wizard to try to get around Gringotts. But they don't think they took anything. That's odd. And that's what's odd. Of course, everyone gets scared when someone like this happens, in case you know who's behind it. Harry turned this news over in his mind. He was starting to get a prickle of fear every time you know who was mentioned. He supposed this was all part of entering the magical world. But why had it been a lot more comfortable saying Voldemort without worrying? What's your Quidditch team? Uh, Ron asked. Er, I don't know any. Harry confessed. What? Ron looked down, dumbfounded. Oh, you wait. Oh, you wait. It's the best game in the world. And he was off, explaining all about the four balls and positions of the seven players, describing famous games. Oops. Describing famous games he'd been, he'd been to with his brothers and the broomstick he'd like to get if he had, enough, had the money, he was taking Harry through the finger points in the, of the game. When the car compartment door slid open yet again, but it wasn't Nivel, Nivel the totalist boy, or Hermione Granger this time. Three boys entered, and Harry recognized the middle one at once. It was the pale boy from Madame Malcolm's robe, sh robe shop. He was looking at Harry with a lot more interest than he'd he'd shown back in the Diagon Alley. Is it true? he said. 
they're saying all down the train that Harry Potter's in this compartment. So it's you, is it? Yes. Yes, said Harry. He was looking at the other boys. Both of them were thickest, thick set and looked extremely mean. Standing on either side of the pale boy, they looked like bodyguards. Oh, this is Krabby and this is Coil, said the pale boy, carelessly noticing where Harry was looking. And my name's M Malfoy, Draco Malfoy. Ron gave a slight cough, which might have been hiding a snigger. Draco Malfoy looked at him. Think my name's funny, do you? No need to ask who you are. My father told me that told me all the Weasleys have red hair, freckles, and more children than they could afford. He turned back to Harry. You'll soon find out some wizarding families are so much better than others, Potter. You don't want to go making friends with the wrong sort. I can help you there. He yelled out his hand to shake Harry's. But Harry didn't take it. I think I can tell who I think I can tell who the wrong sort of sort are for myself. Thanks, he said coolly. Draco Malfoy didn't go red, but a pink tingle appeared in his pale, pale cheeks. I'd be careful if I were you, Potter, he said slowly. Unless you're a bit politer, you'll go the same way as your parents. They didn't know what what was good for them either. You hang around with riff riff raff like the Weasleys and that Hagrid. And it'll rub off you on you. Both Harry and Ron stood up. Say that again, Ron said, his face as red as his hair. Oh, you're gonna fight us, are you? Malfoy sneered. Unless you get out now, said Harry more bravely than he felt. Because Krabby and Goyle, Goyle, Goyle were a lot bigger than him or Ron. But we don't feel like leaving, do we boys? We've eaten all our food and you still seem to have some. Goyle reached toward the chocolate frogs next to Ron. Ron leapt forward, but before he'd, he'd so much as touched Goyle, Goyle let out a horrible scream. I mean, hor horrible yell. Scabbers the rat was hanging off his finger. Sh sharp little teeth sunk in deep into Goyle's knuckle. Krabby Moifo Malfoy backed away as Goyle, Goyle, Goyle swung Scabbers round and round, howling, and when Scabbers finally blew off and hit the window, all three of them disappeared at once. Perhaps they thought they there were more rats lurking among the sweets. Or perhaps they'd heard footsteps, because a second later, Hermione Granger had come in. What has been going on? She said, looking at all the sweets all over the floor, and Ron's pick up scabbers by the tail. I think he's been knocked out, Ron said to Harry. He looked... Closer at Scabbers. No, I don't believe it. He's gone back to sleep. <laughs> well, and he, and so he had. You've met Malfoy before? Harry explained about their meeting in Diagon Alley. I've heard of his family, said Ron darkly. They were some of the first to come back to our side after you-know-who disappeared. Said they'd been bewitched. My dad doesn't believe it. He says Malfoy's father didn't didn't need an excuse to go over to the dark side. He turned to Hermione. Can we help you with something? You better hurry up and put your robes on. I've been up into the front of it and the, I've been I've just been up to the front to ask the conductor and he says we're nearly there. You haven't been fighting, have you? You'll be in trouble before we even get there. Scabbers has been fighting, not us, said Ron, scouring at her. Would you mind leaving while we change? Alright, I only came here because people outside are being very childless, childish, child childishly racing up and down the corridors, said Hermione in a sniffy voice. And you've got dirt on your nose. By the way, did you know? Ron glared at her as she left. Harry peered out of a window at, at it was getting darker. He could see mountains and forests under a deep purple sky. The train did seem to be slowing down. He and Ron took off their jackets and pulled on their long black robes. Harry's were a bit short for him. He could see his sneakers underneath them. A voice echoed through the train. We'll be reaching Hogwarts in five minutes' time. 
please leave your luggage on the train. It will be taken to the school separately. Harry's stomach lurched with nerves, and, ha and Ron, he saw, looked pale under his freckles. They crammed their pockets with the last of his sweets and joined the crowd thr thronging the corridor. The train slowed right down and finally stopped. People pushed their way toward the door and out on the onto a tiny dark platform. Harry shivered in the cold night air. Then a lamp came bopping over the heads of the students, and Harry heard a familiar voice. First years, first years, over here. All right, Harry. Hagrid's big hairy face beamed over the sea of heads. Come on, follow me. Any more first years? Mind your step now. First years, follow me. Slipping and stumbling, they followed Hagrid down what seemed to be a steep, narrowing, narrow, narrow path. It was so dark on either side of them that Harry thought they, there must be thick trees there. Nobody spoke much. Nibble, the boy who kept loosing the toad, his toad, sniffed once or twice. Y'all get your first sight of Hogwarts in a second. In a sec, Hagrid called over his shoulder. Just round this bend here. There was a loud ooh. The narrow path had opened the opened suddenly onto the edge of a great black lake. Perched atop a high mountain on the other side, its window windows sparkling in the sk starry sky was a vast castle with many turrets and towers. We're almost done, guys. No more than four to our boat, Hagrid called, pointing to a fleet of little boats sitting in the water by the shore. Harry and Ron were followed by followed into their boats into into their boat by Nivelle and Hermione. Everyone in? shouted Hagrid, who had a boat to but boat to himself. Right then. Forward! And a fleet of little boats moved off all at once, gliding across the lake, which had, which was as smooth as glass. Everyone was silent, staring up at the great castle overhead. It towered, it towered over them as they sailed near and nearer to the cliff on which it stood. Heads down! Yelled Haggard as the first boats reached the cliff. They had all bent their heads, and the and the little boats carried them through a curtain of ivy that hid a wide opening in the cliff face. They were carried along a dark tunnel which seemed to be taken, taking them right underneath the castle till they reached a kind of underground harbor where they clambered onto, out onto the rocks and pebbles. Oi, you there, is that your toad? said Hagrid who was checking the boats as the people climbed out of them. Trevor! cried Hivel blissfully, holding out his hands. Then they clambered up a passageway in the rock after Hagrid's lamps coming out at once onto small, a smooth, damp grass right in the shadow of the castle. They walked up a flight of stone steps and crowded around the huge oak front door. Everyone here? You there, still got your toad? Hagrid raised a gigantic fist and knocked three times on the castle door. That is the end of chapter chapter five. Oh, chapter six the journey from platform nine and three quarters next chapter is chapter seven the sorting hat excited this has been a long episode we've been e able to finish chapter six and a few pages of five well anyways guys thanks for watching and if you do enjoy these series subscribe for more information and hopefully i'll be able to make another video of uh Harry Potter read aloud very soon. And who knows, maybe I'll have the cursed child read aloud soon. We'll just we'll just have to find out. Have a great rest of your days, guys. Bye. Or Okay, bye people.